Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm having a look at two different things, a couple of different things, which use clip and text to make 3D renders of things. Yeah? Yeah, text to 3D. We like that, don't we? We like that. So let's have a quick look at this abstract here from Google Research. Here, we combine neural rendering with multimodal image and text representations to synthesize diverse 3D objects solely from natural language descriptions. Or, in other words, you type in a bit of text and it makes a delicious 3D render for you. How awesome is that? There is the default one there, a bouquet of flowers sitting in a clear glass vase. As you can see, absolutely fantastic. And there's a sculpture of a rooster, you've got a robotic dog as well, and all these other things, map painting, trending on art station, rendered in Unreal Engine, and all, all this sort of stuff that you're used to and typing into your clip when you're making text to image. Yep, you can do all of that as well with text to 3D. Yeah, how, how awesome, how awesome. So there's a couple of things. You've got the code there on GitHub and also a Colab notebook demo. Me being me, I did, of course, a little go with the GitHub and running this locally. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, spoilers, I'd, I'd probably stick to the Colab. Um, so there are a couple of ways to run this locally. You've got a Docker here, which is great, which is fantastic if you use Docker. Uh, I, of course, tried running it in a virtual environment, which is fine. You know, it, it all installs and runs perfectly well. Um, apart from this this little bit here, not, not entirely sure about. Not entirely sure about. So they provide three configuration files, the low quality, medium quality, and high quality. Uh, low quality is meant to provide faster, around 30 minute uh, text to 3D synthesis, uh, assuming you have four 16 gigabyte GPUs available to you. I, of course, only have one GPU. So I gave it a little go. And uh, first of all, the low quality config said, no, you, you don't have enough VRAM. I'm terribly sorry, terribly sorry. Um, so I, I changed it a little bit, got it running, and uh, basically the same settings as the Colab notebook, dropped the number of samples down to 64, uh, and uh, did the, the default one there, bouquet of flowers sitting in a clear glass vase. And it said, no, 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 this is gonna take about seven hours. <laughs> So not, not quite 30 minutes, seven hours. So um, yes, I, I stopped that one. I stopped that one. Uh, probably something to run overnight, but uh, yes, would highly recommend using the Colab instead. I did have a go on this one and this took around two hours or so instead. So this was a little bit faster, a little bit faster on this one. Pretty easy to use uh, if you've ever used anything before. Uh, but all, all you have to do, scroll down after you've installed all this, and then you've got your prompts eventually here you go configuring a run so query there that's where you put your you know a, a 3d robot rendered on uh, art station trending on unreal engine whatever you want to put in there and uh, whatever seed you want to use pick your clip model basically i stuck with the defaults that's it i just changed the query in the seed all these all these other things yep yeah, stuck them as the same uh maybe if you've got colab pro then you can boost, boost things a bit higher uh, but just with the free version, all those defaults ran fine. Now, as mentioned, it does take a little while. <laughs> and uh, you will see it building up slowly over time. You'll get this little grid down here and it'll start off and slowly build up more and more images. And then eventually you will finally get your high quality 3D render of a Jenga tower or whatever text you typed in. So there you go. That's Dream Fields. All very nice. All very cool. And now over to the second one. This one is Clip Matrix. This is very similar, but it doesn't create the 3D model. You have to give it a, an OBJ file, 3D object, so you can give it, you know, your own 3D model that you've got. And uh, basically it will do the textures for you and uh, model the, uh, it'll change the 3D model a little bit, but not too far, obviously, from the original model that you give it. So if you give it a model of a humanoid, which is the, the default one with this, then you won't, you won't be able to make a four-legged dog out of it. Uh, but you will be able to make vampires and werewolves and all, all sorts of other uh, humanoid type creatures. Now, uh, there's the paper there, link to the paper, and also a link to the Twitter account there. So to go and give them a follow, uh, because yeah, it's, it's the right thing to do. So here we go, let's, let's have a little scroll down in here. And again, much the same thing. You can run this locally as well. It's nice, it's got an if is collab, so it, you know, it'll change your paths. You don't have to take the slash content out. It will all install nicely. Uh, one suggestion I do have, um, if you're installing this locally, is to use Torch 1.9.1 uh, purely for uh, the PyTorch 3D 
Uh, it's a little bit tricky to get it compiled with the latest PyTorch 111. So yeah, you use PyTorch 1.9 uh, and uh, you can do your Jupyter Notebook stuff locally and that will all run nicely. Again, this is pretty similar. You know, you'll, you'll keep most of the stuff the same there. Model.obj, that's, that's your OBJ file. It will download that one for you by default if you want it. If you haven't got an OBJ, that's absolutely fine. And then you've got all this text here. So you've got the head prompt, head with tentacles of body prompt. So this, this is all um, your clip stuff. Now, you'll notice here we've got a couple of lists. So if you put lots and lots of lists of text in here, separate them all by commas and quotes and stuff, then it will pick randomly from them. Yeah, so you might get a, a robot detailed to the maximum glowing hot fire or, or some such, you know. So yeah, if you want to put lists in there, it will do random and it will go through all of them and you'll get lots of stuff. Again, all of these are left pretty much at the default, but if you've got better uh, GPUs than Colab, are free then by all means bump some stuff up and see what's going on here now there are a couple of tick boxes in here so you've got use normal maps and use neural shader so you want to set those to false for better mesh exports uh, or to true for better videos so when you uh, oops pop over here during that's clip matrix output mesh so there you go with the meshes you get an obj and you'll get a texture file as well. So if you're, if you're looking for the mesh exports, then set use normal maps and use neural shader to false. There you go. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. There you go. Click run all. It will go through all this stuff, go through all the stuff. And then eventually at the end, you'll get your, your 3D model and your plots and all your different videos. So I'll have a, a little look at some of the videos in here. There we go. So for example, here is a, uh, weird frog creature there you go weird frog creature yeah that's that's nice and weird <laughs> or it'll do little zoomy in videos as well there's a, a bizarre looking demon yeah it, it tends to put faces on the back uh, as well but it also seems to look like a spine sometimes which is quite nice i do do quite like that so yes there you go you get lots of videos you get your mesh uh, and it's all fun obviously then you can import your your obj into blender or whatever 3d program you like and uh, it's all fantastic so there you go two things to play with text to 3d rodent out for now